from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Data Science for All. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to New York here on theCUBE. Along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls. We're at Data Science for All, IBM's two-day event. And uh, we'll be here all day long, wrapping up again with that panel discussion from four to five here, Eastern time. So be sure to stick around all day here on theCUBE. Joining us now is Vikram Morali, who's a program director at IBM. And Vikram, thank you for joining us here on theCUBE. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for having me. You bet. Um, so uh, among your primary responsibilities, the data science experiment, experience, um, so first off, if you would share with our viewers a little bit about that, uh, you know, the, the, the primary mission, and yep. you've had two fairly significant announcements, updates yes. if you will, here over the past month or so, so share some uh, information about that too if you would. Sure, um, so uh, my team, we build the data science experience, and our goal is um, for us to enable data scientists uh, in their path to um, gain insights into data uh, using data science techniques, uh, machine learning, uh, the latest and greatest, uh, open source uh, especially, um, and uh, be able to do collaboration with fellow data scientists, uh, with uh, data engineers, business analysts, um, and, and we, we, it, it's all about freedom. Uh, giving freedom to data scientists to pick the tool of their choice and uh, program and code in the uh, language of their choice. So that's the mission of Data Science Experience when we started this. Uh, the two releases that you mentioned uh, that we had in the last 45 days, uh, there was one in September and then well, there was one on October 30th. Both these releases um, are very significant in the machine learning space especially. Uh, we now support uh, scikit-learn, uh, XGBoost, uh, TensorFlow libraries in data science experience. Uh, we have deep integration with uh, Hotton Data Platform, uh, which is, uh, came out of our partnership with Hottonworks, um, something that we announced back in the summer. Um, and uh, this uh, last release of Data Science Experience, uh, two days back, specifically, uh, can do authentication with secure Knox with Hadoop. So now uh, our Hadoop customers, our Hotton Data Platform customers, can leverage um, all the goodies that we have in Data Science Experience. It's more deeply integrated with our Hadoop-based environments. A lot of people ask me, okay, when IBM announces a product, like the Data Science Experience, you know, IBM has a lot of products in its portfolio. Are they just kind of cobbling together, you know, so these old things, older products and putting a sort of skin on them, or are they mm -hmm. developing it from scratch? How, how can you help us understand that? That's, that's a great question, and I hear that a lot from our customers right. as well. Um, data Science Experience uh, started off as a design first methodology, and what I mean by that is we are um, using IBM design uh, to lead the charge here, um, along with product and uh, development. And we are actually talking to customers, to data scientists, to data engineers, uh, to enterprises, and uh, we are trying to find out what problems that they have in data science today, and how we can best address them. So it's not about uh, taking older products and just reskinning them, but Data Science Experience, for example, it started off as a brand new product, um, completely new slate, um, with completely new code. Now, IBM has done data science and machine learning for a very long time. We have a lot of assets, uh, like SPSS Modeler and Stats and Decision Optimization. Um, and we are reinvesting in those products. And uh, we are uh, investing in such a way and doing product refreshes in such a way, um, not to make the old fit with the new, but in a way where um, it fits into the realm of collaboration. How can data scientists leverage uh, our existing products with open source? and how we can do collaboration. So it's, it's not just reskinning, but it's building ground up. So this is really important, because so you say architecturally it's built from the, the ground up, because you know, given enough time and enough money and enough smart people, you can make anything work. Um, so the reason why this is important is you mentioned, for instance, TensorFlow. You know that down the road there's going to be some other tooling, some other open source project that's going to take, take hold and your customers and say, hey, I want that. You've got to then integrate that, uh, or you have to choose whether or not to. If it's a super heavy lift, you might not be able to do it or do it in, in time to hit the market. Uh, if you've architected your system to be able to accommodate that, you know, future-proof is the term mm -hmm. everybody uses. So, have you done that? How have you done that? I'm sure APIs are involved, but maybe you could add some color. Sure, um, so we, uh, our, our entire, so data science experience and machine learning, uh, it is a microservices based architecture. Mm -hmm. um, so we are completely dockerized and we use Kubernetes under the covers uh, for Docker you know, container orchestration. 
And all these are uh, tools that are used um, you know, in the valley um, across uh, different companies um, and also in, in products across IBM as well. Uh, so some of these legacy products that you mentioned, uh, we are actually using some of these newer methodologies mm -hmm. to re-architect them, and we are dockerizing them, and, and the microservice architecture actually helps us um, address issues that we have today, as well as be open to um, development and, and uh, taking newer methodologies and frameworks into consideration that may not exist today. So the microservices architecture, for example, TensorFlow is something that you brought in. Mm -hmm. So we can just pin up a Docker container just for TensorFlow and attach it to our existing data science experience and it just works. Mm -hmm. Same thing with other frameworks like XGBoost and Keras um, and Scikit-Learn. All these are um, uh, you know, frameworks and libraries uh, that are coming up in open source within the last, I would say, a year, two years, three years time frame. Um, previously, integrating them into our product would have been a nightmare. Uh, we, we would have had to re-architect our product every time something came, but now with the microservice architecture, it is very easy for us to consume those. We were just talking to Daniel Hernandez uh, a little bit about the Hortonworks you know, relationship at a high level. Um, one of the things that I've, I mean, I've been following Hortonworks since day one, um, when Yahoo kind of spun them out, spun them out and, and know those guys pretty well, and they always make a big deal out of when they do partnerships, it's deep engineering right. and integration. Um, and so they're very proud of that. So I want to come on to test that a little bit. It, you know, can you can you share with our audience the kind of integrations that you've done, what you brought to the table, what Hortonworks brought to the table? Yes. Um, so data science experience today can work uh, side by side with Hortonworks Data Platform (HDP), mm -hmm. um, and and uh, that we could have actually made that work about two three months back. But as part of our partnership that was announced back in June we set up joint engineering teams. Uh, we have multiple touch points every day. Um, we call it co-development. And uh, they have put resources in, we have put resources in. And today, especially with the release that came out on October 30th, um, data science experience can authenticate using secure Knox that I previously mentioned. And that was um, a direct um, example of our partnership uh, with, with Hortonworks. So that is phase one. Uh, phase two and phase three is going to be deeper integration. So we are planning on uh, making data science experience an Ambari management pack. Um, so a Hortonworks customer, if you have HDP already installed, you don't have to install DSX separately. It's going to be a management pack, you just pin it up. Um, and uh, the third phase is going to be, we're going to be uh, using Yarn for resource management. Yarn is very good at resource management. Um, and um, you know, for infrastructure as a service, for data scientists, uh, we can actually delegate that work to Yarn. So Hortonworks, they are putting resources in into Yarn, uh, doubling down actually, and uh, they are making changes to Yarn where it will act as the resource manager, not only for their Hadoop and Spark workloads, but also for data science workloads. Mm -hmm. So that is the level of deep engineering that we are engaged with Hortonworks. Yarn stands for yet another resource negotiator. There <laughs> yes. you go. For uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. The, tri the trivia <laughs> of the day. Um, oh, okay, so, but, but of course, you know, Hortonworks are, are big on, you know, committers, obviously a big committer to Yarn. You probably wouldn't have Yarn with, without, without Hortonworks. Um, so you mentioned that's kind of what they're bringing to the table. And you guys primarily are focused on the integration as well as some other IBM IP? Um, that is true, as well as uh, the Knox piece that I mentioned. Yeah, uh, right. We have a Knox committer. Um, we have multiple Knox committers on our site. Um, and that helps us as well. So mm -hmm. although Knox is part of the uh, HDP uh, you know, package, mm -hmm. uh, we need knowledge on our side to work with Hortonworks developers to make sure that we are contributing um, and making um, uh, inroads into data science experience. That way the integration becomes a lot more easier. Um, and from an IBM IP perspective, so data science experience already comes with a lot of packages and libraries that are open source. Uh, but IBM has worked on, IBM Research has worked on a lot of these libraries. Um, I'll give you a few examples. Brunel and Pixie Dust is something that our developers love. Uh, these are visualization libraries that were actually uh, cooked up by IBM Research and then open sourced. And these are pre-packaged into data science experience. Mm -hmm. So there is IBM IP involved and there are a lot of um, algorithms, uh, machine learning 
learning algorithms that we put in there. So that comes right out of the package. And you guys, have, the development teams are, are really both in the, in the valley, is that right? Or are you really distributed around the world? Or? Yeah, so we are, um, the data science development team is in North America between you know, the valley and uh, Toronto. Uh, the uh, Hortonworks team, they are um, situated about eight miles from where we are in the valley. So <laughs> there's a lot of synergy. We work very closely with them. Um, and, and that's what we see in the product. Yeah, I mean, what, what impact does that have? I mean, is it, is it you know, you hear today, oh, yeah, we're a virtual organization, we have people all over the world, Eastern Europe, Brazil. How much of, a, of an impact is that to have people so physically proximate? Um, I think it has a major impact. I mean, IBM is a global organization, so we do have teams around the world, and uh, we work very well. Um, with the invent of uh, you know IP telephony and uh, you know um, screen shares and so on, yes, we work. Uh, but it really helps being in the same time zone, especially working with a partner um, just eight miles or ten miles away. Um, we have a lot of interaction with them, and that really helps. Yeah, body what, language. Yeah. yeah. What, what uh, you talked about? You talked about problems. You talked about issues. You know, customers. What are they now? Before it was like you know, first off, I, I want to get more data. Now they got more data. Is it? figuring out what to do with it, finding it, you know, having it available, having it accessible, making sense of it, I mean, what's, uh, what's so the barrier right now? <laughs> the barrier, um, I think for data scientists, the number one barrier continues to be data. There's a lot of data out there, a lot of data being generated, and uh, the data is dirty, it's not clean. Um, so the number one uh, problem that data scientists have is how do I get to clean data, and how do I access data? There are so many data repositories, data lakes, and data swamps out there. Uh, data scientists, they don't want to be in the business of finding out how do I access data. They want to have instant access to data. And um, well, in, if you would interrupt, when you say yeah. it's dirty, mm -hmm. give me an example. Okay. Um, so it's not structured data. So data so scientists- unstructured versus structured. Unstructured versus structure. And uh, if you look at uh, all the social media feeds that are uh, being generated, the amount of data that, that is being generated, it's all unstructured data. Okay. So we need to clean up that data and the algorithms need structured data um, or a data in a particular format. And uh, data scientists don't want to spend too much time in cleaning up that data. Mm -hmm. Um, and access to data as I mentioned. And that's where data science experience comes in. Out of the box, we have so many connectors available. It's very easy for customers to bring in their own connectors as well, and you have instant access to data. And as part of our partnership with Hortonworks, um, you don't have to bring data into data science experience. The data is becoming so big, uh, you want to leave it where it is. Instead, push analytics down to where it is. And uh, you can do that. We can connect to Remote Spark, we can push analytics down to Remote Spark, all of that is possible um, today with data science experience. The second uh, thing that I hear from data scientists is all the open source libraries. Every day there's a new one. It's, it's, it's a boon and a bane as well. Mm -hmm. and, and the problem with that is uh, uh, the open source community is very vibrant. Um, and there are a lot of uh, data science competitions, machine learning competitions that are helping move this community forward and it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, the bad thing is um, data scientists like to work in uh, silos on their laptop. How do you, from an enterprise perspective, how do you take that and how do you move it, uh, scale it to an enterprise level? Mm -hmm. And that's where data science experience comes in because now we provide all the tools, the tools of your choice, open source or proprietary, you have it in here and you can easily collaborate, you can do all the work that you need with open source packages and libraries, bring your own, and as well as collaborate with other data scientists in the enterprise. Mm -hmm. So, you're talking about dirty, dirty data. I mean, we, with Hadoop and no schema on write, we kind of knew this problem was coming, so technology sort of got us into this problem. Can, can technology help us get out of it? I mean, from an architectural standpoint, when you think about dirty data, can you architect things in that help? Yes, um, so if you look at the machine learning pipeline, uh, the pipeline starts with ingesting data mm -hmm. and then cleansing or cleaning that data um, and then you go into creating a model, training, picking a classifier and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so we have tools built into data science experience and we are working on tools that will be coming out in, uh, you know, down our roadmap. Um, which will help data scientists do that themselves. I mean, they don't have to be really uh, you know, in-depth coders or developers to do that. Um, Python is very powerful. You can do a lot of data wrangling in Python itself. So we are enabling data scientists to do that within the platform, within data science experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if I look at this, the sort of demographics of the development teams, we're talking about you know, Hortonworks and you guys collaborating. What are the what are they like? I mean, people picture IBM as you know, hundred plus year old company, and yeah. what's the persona of the developers in your team? 
Um, the persona, um, I would say we have a very uh, young, agile development team. Um, and, and by that I mean, uh, so we've had six releases this year uh, in data science experience uh, just for the on-premises side of the product. And the cloud side of the product, it's continuous delivery. Um, we have releases coming out faster than you know we can we can uh, uh, count, and and it's not just re-architecting it every time, but it's about uh, adding features, uh, giving features that our customers are asking for, and not making them wait for three months, six months, one year. So our our releases are becoming a lot more frequent, and customers are loving it, and that is in part because of the team. Um, the team is able to evolve. We are very agile. And uh, we have an awesome team. That's all, you know. <laughs> it's an amazing team. Right. But six releases in in in. Yes, we had a major issue, release right, in right. April, and right. since then we've had about five um, revisions of the release, where we add a lot more features to our existing releases, a uh, lot more packages, libraries, uh, functionality, and so right. on. So you know what monster you're creating now, don't you? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we are setting expectations. I mean, so that you is still have two months left well, in 2017. We do. They're not right? mainframe release cycles. Yeah. They're not, right. they're not. Right, right. And that's the advantage of the microservice architecture. I mean, when you upgrade, a customer upgrades, right? Um, they don't have to bring that entire system down to upgrade. You can target one particular pod, just one particular microservice, you componentize it, and just upgrade that uh, particular microservice. It's, it's become very simple. Sure. So. sure. Well, some of those microservices aren't so micro. Uh, <laughs> They're not, it's, yeah, so it's, it's a yeah, balance. Growing, yeah. It's a balance you have to keep, uh, making sure that you componentize it in such a way that when you're doing an upgrade, it affects just one small piece of it and you don't have to take everything down. Right. So, but yeah, I agree with you. Well, it's been a busy year for it's, you, to say yeah. the least, and uh, I'm sure 2017, 2018 is not going to slow down, so uh, continue success. Thank you. Wish you well with that. Vikram, thank you for being with us here on theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for having me. You bet. Welcome. Back with uh, Data Science for All here in New York City, IBM. Coming up here on theCUBE, right after this. You guys are clear. All right. Thank you. That was great.